I think I'm getting a headache. Really? Do you feel all right? Of course I feel all right. I always feel all right when I have a headache. My name is Jack Matthews, and I'm a writer. And in 1968, I published an article in the CEA Critic arguing that the uh, Oedipus did not solve the riddle of the Sphinx after all. Now this sets the whole play on its head uh, because the play is a playing out of Oedipus's uh, conviction that he is a wise man because he has solved the riddle of the Sphinx. I enjoyed writing this article. It was an adventure for me. Later on, I wrote a play that, uh, I think it was a play. If you actually did destroy yourself, wouldn't that mean that Oedipus had answered the riddle correctly? Or did you merely deceive him into thinking you'd destroyed yourself, trapping him inside a lie from which he could never escape? Didn't you just ask me that question? I did, and you didn't answer it, so I'll keep on asking it until you do. Oh, come on now. Haven't you ever told a little white lie? You mean it could be true? You mean... Well, not everything is as it seems. In the interview with the Sphinx, an interviewer simply asked the Sphinx if this uh, theory is correct, if there's anything to it. She, with exasperating uh, vagueness and uh, flirtatious uh, and almost ominous uh, evasiveness, uh, refuses, of course, to answer the question. So we leave uh, the play without really knowing, although the play itself isn't exactly about that. It's about the Sphinx herself as a kind of force of nature, as a demonic character, and as a fascinating, utterly fascinating woman. Why, do you know one of the awful lies they used to tell about me? No, what? Why, they said I had two faces. Can you believe such a thing? And then there was that business about my having the body of a dog or a lion and the wings of a giant eagle. People are so literal-minded. So. And this play really lends itself to that because it doesn't have a lot of physicality to it. It's really all about the words. So right. I think this play translates very well to an audio recording. the gods that they worshipped were more human and they were imperfect and they had flaws and they had times where they got angry or they got flustered or they got sexy or they got flirty, you know, and, and you see a lot of that uh, in the Sphinx character. And, and I think Jill did a good job of sort of bringing that to the surface so that it's not this all-knowing, all-powerful, well, maybe she is all-knowing and all-powerful, but, but she's not perfect either. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's infuriating to this interviewer who wants all of his answers to be precise and perfect. The appealing thing about the play is just that uh, the uh, Sphinx could be any modern celebrity. I mean, the first thing I thought of when I re read the play was this could be Lady Gaga or Madonna. Uh, she was kind of, kind of an asshole, but kind of funny and kind of, kind of sexy, kind of flirtatious. Uh, you know, a multifaceted person. Absolutely, and she's been around for so long, so she's seen it all. Uh, so she's also very jaded, and I think trying to find something new to entertain herself is tough at this point. 